Okay, so in this video, I want to do a deep dive into how to pass the MSRA exam in medicine. The MSRA is a computer-based multiple choice exam that features both clinical questions and a situational judgment test. It's a pretty big deal as almost all doctors in the UK are required to sit it as part of the specialty training selection process. And it has a pretty huge impact on your life and your career as your score helps to decide what job you'll get and where you'll be training for the next few years of your life. I'm going to be going deep into what the MSRA is, how to prepare for it, and the best resources to use so that you can get the highest score possible and have the best chance of getting the specialty job that you want. I'm going to be going into how to answer situational judgment questions too, so even if you're not a medic, do stick around and check out the chapter markers down below. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, and let's get into it. So the MSRA stands for the Multi-Specialty Recruitment Assessment, and it's a three-hour computer-based exam that's used as part of selection into postgraduate specialty training in the UK. It's used predominantly at selection for CT1 and ST1 levels, as you can see from this diagram, with the exam itself sat by most people during the F2 year after you apply for specialty training and before the interviews themselves. There are two sittings of the MSRA each year, one in January for round one applications and one in September for round two, with booking opening the month before. The MSRA was originally introduced as part of specialty selection for GP training and has gradually been rolled out to most other medical specialties. It's basically used as a way to shortlist candidates before selection interviews and it features a mix of clinical multiple choice questions like finals and situational judgment questions like the SJT split across two papers held on the same day. By way of a little medical education history, Health Education England, who are responsible for all medical training in the UK, paid a company called the Work Psychology Group to review the specialty training selection process and they helped to design the MSRA. The MSRA was created to assess those with a foundation level of medical competence, with the clinical questions based on the foundation programme curriculum and the situational judgment questions based on the generic professional capabilities framework outlined by the GMC. As the content focuses on the foundation years, the MSRA was deemed relevant and fair for doctors applying to any medical specialty. Now, I'll let you folks debate that down below in the comments. I'm not a huge fan of making doctors do even more exams at stressful times, and that's why I wanted to do this video, so that you can hack the system by knowing how to do well, and this hopefully goes some way to taking off some of that stress around your day job. The MSRA is currently used for entry into postgraduate medical training for GP, psychiatry, radiology, obs and gynae, neurosurgery, anaesthetics, ophthalmology, nuclear medicine, where it's used at ST3 level, ACCS, and core surgery. Now, the way that each of these specialties uses the MSRA is very variable. For example, during the pandemic, GP and psychiatry switched from in-person interviews to only using the MSRA to select candidates. So for GP and psych, 100% of your rank depended on how you scored in the MSRA. It's the only thing that determines if you get a job and where that job is. There's no selection center, no interview, no portfolio at all for GP and psych. Most other specialties use the MSRA as part of your overall score and combine the MSRA with interviews. If you're applying for CT1 anesthetics, for example, your MSRA contributes 15% of your overall score. It's sensible to check the website of the specialty to which you're applying as year to year specifics can vary. And it may be that the interviews go back to being in person, but regardless of the weighting and scoring, the MSRA is still going to be a significant contributor to where you get a job. So let's look at the exam format and how to score highly, regardless of what specialty you're applying to. To book an MSRA exam, you need to first apply for specialty training in one of the specialties that uses the MSRA. This is done through the Oriel application system. If you meet the eligibility criteria for that specialty, you'll then be invited to book the MSRA exam. You can't apply directly to sit the MSRA. You have to first submit an application and have that application accepted. The MSRA is delivered in Pearson View test centers across several consecutive days within the MSRA exam windows in January and September each year. The MSRA can be sat in the UK and internationally, and you can find the nearest test center to you by heading over to the Pearson View website. It's worth noting that there will be lots of people booking MSRA exam slots around specialty application time in November and August, and there may not be availability at your nearest Pearson View Centre. This means that travel might be further to sit your exam, so try and book early if you can. 
Now time for a bit of good news, and that is that the MSRA exam itself is free, so you don't need to pay for it like other professional exams you might sit. However, you may need to pay for travel or accommodation depending on where your chosen test centre is, and expect to set aside around £200 for exam preparation with question banks and books. This is a pretty sensible investment in my opinion, because as we'll see later, doing as many realistic practice questions as possible is the best way to prepare for the MSRA exam. Now the MSRA is 2 hours 55 minutes in total, and it's split into two parts, a professional dilemmas paper and a clinical problem solving paper. There's a five minute break in between the two papers included in the overall time. The whole thing's done on computer in a test center under exam conditions, and the first paper is always the professional dilemma paper, which is 95 minutes. Then there's a five minute break, and then there's the clinical problem solving paper, which is 75 minutes. You can't just start the CPS paper after finishing the PD paper, unfortunately. They're two separate papers under the same exam conditions, so if you finish early, you'll have to wait. On the day, each candidate is given different questions from a central question bank, so the person sat next to you in your test centre will have a different set of questions, which is done to limit any cheating or sharing of answers with candidates sitting the exam on different days. The Professional Dilemmas paper has 50 situational judgement style questions in 95 minutes, of which 42 questions are scored and 8 are being piloted and carry zero marks but you don't know which these are. The PD paper is split into two sections in itself. Section one of the PD paper uses ranking questions. You get a scenario, there's four or five options, and you rank them best to worst. In section two of the PD paper, there's a scenario, there's eight options, and you're then asked to select the three most appropriate options from the list. The main challenge with the PD paper is time. With 50 scenarios and 95 minutes, you get around one minute 48 seconds per question. However, as the scenarios require some thought, it can be easy to spend too long on some questions and then run out of time. The CPS paper is up next and has 97 clinical questions in 75 minutes, of which 86 are scored and 11 are being piloted each year. The 86 CPS clinical questions are split up equally into extended matching style questions where you're given a scenario and asked to choose the most appropriate option from a list of about 7 to 10 possible answer options, and then single best answer style questions where you're asked to choose the most appropriate option from a list of 4 or 5 answer options. You have about 45 seconds to answer each question on the CPS paper, and the standard is similar to medical finals. Your overall mark for the MSRA comes from your combined scores across the Professional Dilemmas paper and the Clinical Problem Solving paper. Your score for each paper is then placed into a range and a band. The individual specialties using the MSRA will then use their own cutoff score as part of their selection process. As you can see, only the top 1 or 2% of doctors score at the highest level. There's no negative marking, so you should answer every single question but each paper is marked slightly differently, so let's take a look at each in turn. The Professional Dilemmas paper is a situational judgement test, and as such, its scoring can be a little bit confusing. So let's spend some time understanding how the PD questions are marked, as once you figure that out, it really helps you when it comes to selecting the correct answers. The PD paper focuses on your approach to working as a doctor. Specifically, the paper measures your understanding of situations that arise for doctors in the NHS during foundation placement, and your judgement to select appropriate actions. It focuses on appropriate behaviours when interacting with patients and colleagues and in managing your work. The PD paper assesses you against three core competencies from the person specification for specialty training. Professional integrity, coping with pressure and empathy and sensitivity. You don't need any clinical knowledge to answer the PD questions, but what really helps is being familiar with the NHS, how it works and having a really good working knowledge of the GMC ethical guidelines and good medical practice. Each question will give you a work-based scenario where you have to make a difficult decision or use your judgement, and some of them will involve ethical or professional dilemmas. In section one, which are the ranking questions, each question is worth up to 20 marks. So as we can see here in this example question, there are five options and we need to rank them in order. For these ranking scenarios, the answer options are discrete actions. You can only perform one best action, so it's A or B or C, not A, then B. There's always a best order which the examiner set, and then your answer is compared to this. So for this question, here's the answer order. There's a maximum of 20 marks if you get the exact order correct that the examiners have set, and then a range from 18 to 8, depending on how close your order is to theirs. In the exam, you should compare each answer to the answers above and below, and then on the computer screen, you drag each answer and order your answers together. 
In section two of the PD paper, which is the multiple select section, each question is worth up to 12 marks. Again, here's a quick example. You get four marks for each correct answer. If you get all three correct, you get 12. Two, you get eight. One, you get four. Now, unlike ranking order for these scenarios, the three most appropriate actions taken together should fully resolve the situation. So it's the combination of the three best actions that resolve the situation. It's A and B and C combined. This subtle difference in how this section of the PD paper is marked causes a ton of confusion. So hopefully these examples help to clear things up and you'll pick it up even further with practice. The CPS paper is a little more straightforward. For each question, one mark is awarded for choosing the correct response without any negative marking. In the CPS part of the assessment, you're presented with clinical scenarios that require you to exercise judgment and problem solving skills to determine appropriate diagnoses and management of patients. Questions in the CPS paper focus on your ability to apply knowledge. The questions are based on foundation level clinical practice and test higher level application of knowledge. Questions are based on 12 clinical topic areas relevant to F2 level and each section of the CPS includes a balance of scenarios which covers all 12 of these topics. And the CPS paper also assesses the core competencies of investigations, diagnosis, emergencies, prescribing and management of patients. Okay, so in this section, I'm gonna dive into how to prepare for the MSRA and cover the best resources to use, when to start preparing and how much time to spend revising around your day job. I'm hoping that this video kind of covers step one, which is to familiarize yourself with the MSRA exam format, timings and scoring. So let's jump straight into step two, which is to practice, practice, practice. It's worth reminding yourself of the GMC ethical guidance and covering some quick summaries of the GMC's good medical practice. I would also suggest spending a little bit of time going back over this video and the official guidance to make sure you fully understand how the PD questions are scored. Other than that, I would save yourself a ton of time and get straight into actually doing questions. So without doubt, the best way to prepare for the MSRA is to do as many active recall questions as possible. Preferably doing these under timed conditions with mock exams, using questions that are as realistic as possible. The best question banks have questions that are very close to the real ones coming up in the MSRA and they'll come with full explanations. This is particularly helpful for the PD paper where some question banks nicely explain the reasoning behind the correct order or selection and this then helps you to switch your brain into thinking along those same lines. There are a bunch of question banks out there and I actually had my team survey all the doctors who went through the most recent MSRA sitting who we had the contact details for to get some feedback. The team ended up getting back responses from just over 200 doctors across GP, anaesthetics and lots of other specialties that my interview company coaches for. So here's a summary of the best question banks out there so that you can decide what's best for you. And remember, you might wanna sign up to multiple question banks so that you do as many questions as possible. So first up is eMedica. This is one of the oldest MSRA question banks out there, originally designed for GP specialty selection when the MSRA was known as just the SRA. eMedica also run courses and have a host of other resources predominantly aimed at GPs that are worth checking out. The eMedica MSRA question bank costs 49 pounds for a month, 99 for four months and 109 for six months and has various tiers in between. The question bank comes with 1,440 clinical questions and 120 SJT style questions together with a selection of mini and full mock exams. The web interface is quite basic, but the content is generally felt to be pretty similar to the real thing. Now, Pass Medicine has 2,500 clinical questions and 250 dilemma questions on offer. Pass Medicine offers a four month subscription for 25 pounds and a six month for 30 pounds. One of Pass Medicine's most liked features is its textbook, which offers explanations and information around clinical topics in detail. Questions were felt to be less similar to those asked at the final MSRA exam than other question banks, but at such a low cost, it's a fairly inexpensive risk to take. MCQ Bank comes with 978 clinical questions and 206 PD questions. The question bank costs £53 for one month access, £59 for four months and £75 for six months. The question content is very close to the real MSRA exam, however the website design and layout are pretty antiquated and might not be to everyone's taste. PassTest offers an offline app and 1,900 MSRA questions to practice. It has a modern interface, good explanations, but perhaps not the most realistic questions. Its pricing is a little different too. 
offering £35 up to the next MSRA sitting and £55 for the sitting after that. So depending on how early you register, you could pick up a really good deal. Shiken is a newer learning platform that features a mobile app, a gamified interface, and the ability to adjust your time per question, which is very helpful for MSRA revision. Shiken is a little different from the others on the list as it allows for multiplayer and acts like a store hosting packages for different tests and exams. The MSRA pack available on the Shiken store comes with just over 5,000 questions, which is the most on the list, and Shiken offers both 3, 6, and 12 month subscription options together with fixed pricing to the date of the next exam. Now, the majority of successful applicants that my team surveyed spent between one to two months preparing, starting their preparation around application time. So if you're sitting the MSRA in January, start revising in November. And if you're sitting in September, get going in July. For many people, revising around a busy day job with on-calls and night shifts is the biggest challenge. If you start early and plan your revision around shifts, it's definitely manageable. This is where the question banks come in really helpful too. I'd spend the first few days making sure you understand the MSRA exam and then plan to do a few hours a day of questions, getting through as many questions as possible. I'd recommend starting with the PD questions as there tend to be fewer of these in the question banks and then attack the clinical questions. You can also factor in mocks and going back over questions as the exam gets closer. The commonest reasons for people failing the MSRA are running out of time because the PD section in particular goes by very, very quickly and it can be easy to overthink some of the questions. Another reason for failing is underestimating the difficulty of the exam. The PD SJT questions require a certain technique that doesn't come naturally to some people. You need to treat it like a driving test and select the best responses against the guidance outlined in the GMC documentation. Now, hopefully this video has given you some ideas about how to be successful at the MSRA exam and get the best score and banding possible. As I mentioned, I'm not a huge fan of doing more postgraduate exams for job selection, especially where the outcome dictates where you could be living and working for the next few years. To help you out even further, I've popped up some videos from my evidence-based learning series to help you study for the MSRA even more efficiently, so do check those out. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you found this video useful, and be sure to come back and let me know your MSRA score when you do pass in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you again next time.